first. Uh, the Honourable Cho Guo-Chu. I to take a call in this debate and to, to try and balance some of the ridiculous assertions that are so broad sweeping and scandalous in that respect. The first thing I want to say is the member is just the tinsiest little bit right when she says that midwives are warning pregnant women about the risk of blue baby syndrome for those, well, for wells. Where the member is just completely off the planet is to think that this is widespread. You, the member knows it is not. It is a very, very small number and every single farmer that takes wells that are uh, well water that is affected in this way knows about it already. So this was a, a very general warning that went far wider and scared many of the pregnant women in my electorate unnecessarily. But that actually is the modus operandi of this particular party sitting over here. I want to talk about uh, the record we have in terms of the support for the forestry sector and then in general. So what we've heard today, how the um, economy is benefiting from primary industries in, in very many ways, and I want to start by um, reminding members of the benefits that certainly accrue through free trade agreements to the forestry sector. The free trade agreement with Korea will see 99% of exports duty-free within 10 years, and then the TPP will see $11 million worth of savings every year, and um, once it's fully implemented, tariff-free. So that's return back to our forestry sector. But in fact, the forestry sector will say they need to grow in other ways too. So we're planting more um, more forestry through the afforestation grant scheme, 22.5 million over five years. Um, and in um, addition to that, updating the timber standard because there is much more to be gained economically through engineered timber. So whilst this is the economic side of things, I think it's really important that we put on the record today that for many in the primary industry sector, not all, it's a pretty tough time right now. And in my electorate, we've certainly seen that and we've seen it further afield up in North Canterbury as well. But this government has put out support for the mental health of rural communities, uh, for the rural support trusts. It's $150,000 extra. You know, most of the rural support trust people are volunteers. They are fantastic, warm, caring, skilled volunteers who are out there supporting their neighbours, out there responding to need, and it's very much a neighbourly thing. We've got, in the, uh, in the next three or four weeks, we've got two events, one in South Canterbury, one in Mid Canterbury, to support farming families to come together, enjoy a bit of time together, and, and gain that support. I was with Annabelle White, she was doing the entertaining, I was doing the listening and the laughing in North Canterbury on the 1st of April when a well-supported rural support trust uh, meeting had 300 women there, a few policemen who were not women, and in fact a waiting list of 60 as well. So fantastic support, people coming together. We see linking arms, we see banks, we see vets, we see um, transport companies who are all out there doing their level best to support some farmers who are finding it really challenging. And we're not just talking about dairy, we're actually talking about other farmers as well. But this is very different to the 80s when that support didn't seem to be there, it certainly is there now. But I particularly want to mention the $500,000 that's gone towards um, mental health support. There's been an extra 60 rural support trust facilitators trained, but 14 regional mental health clinical champions and a medical director appointed. So it's not just money that's floating around. What we know is that the rural support trusts have helped to train in what's called a mental health 101 training, a number of people so that they in rural communities can recognise when people are feeling under pressure, under the pump, so to speak. Now, suicide... Um, is always considered to be um, a problem, but in fact what we know across New Zealand that it is more frequent in rural areas when you look at the population on a population basis. So this of course causes concern, but what we also have out there is, is a much better understanding now of how to rec recognise when people are feeling um, under pressure, to put aside those people, those rural support trust facilitators, and getting around the country, both um, the Minister Nathan Guy and I have been able to catch up with the rural support trusts from the top of the north 
um, earlier in the year, in, in February, to the bottom of the south at the Southern Field Days, um, and then at AMP shows as well. They're doing a fantastic job, and I want to lay it on the record here today. I'm going to call uh, Rhea Bond.